Okay, I'm at Miss Delmar's house, and uh, she wanted us to go ahead and take a look, basically at the roof, and uh, you know, point out any issues she has. She also has a leak that we're going to go ahead and fix today. Um, but here, before I even get off the ladder, I'm looking at a uh, potential leak. Um, basically, what they've done is this shingle here. As you can see, it, it should have slid under the valley. It should have actually slid under the shingle. Um, but whoever put this on couldn't figure out exactly what to do. Um, so they just cut the shingle in half and they put one half under there and then the other half on top of this bottom valley shingle. So basically what you're going to have is at the bottom of the valley, you're going to have a hole right here. Um, there's also a split right here. This split is actually going to let in a lot of water. Um, that's, that's in all likelihood, in all probability, um, <laughs> that's a leak. Um, it might not be showing up because it's on the stone wall, but it definitely is leaking. Um, another thing I noticed as I step off the ladder is the uh, well, first of all, they replaced this valley here. Um, looks like they didn't do a terrible job. Uh, but one thing they did that they shouldn't have was uh, something that's common in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is when uh, normally when you run a valley, the side that you run up first should go first, but the first shingle that intersects with this valley should go underneath. So basically this shingle should be underneath this valley. All right, and then the rest of these should go up. The reason being is right here, again, you have something, what they had over there at that edge is called a water trap. And if you can see down in there, there's actually a hole for water to get in and underneath this valley. Uh, basically, what they did tried to do was they tried to uh, caulk it. Uh, really, you can't caulk that because it's it's just going to open back up. If you want to caulk it, you got to caulk underneath as well. See, because the caulk isn't even working because you got it on top, but the water has already ran under the shingle, and now it's underneath. So the caulking is doing no good because it's on top and the water is already under. Um, it's a common. Uh, mistake by people who really don't understand uh, water drainage. <clears throat> also the person uh, that fixed this roof or added this on, uh, they fixed a mistake by the first roofer, whoever did this section. Uh, basically what this roofer didn't do was he didn't put a starter shingle on. It looks like he put one on right here at the valley. Uh, but they forgot to put the rest of the starters on the rest of the way across this bottom. So what the roofer who uh, fixed this did was he went ahead and put a starter here um, and he effectively fixed that problem. Um, a bad thing that this roofer did was he used drip edge for a pan. Um, it's, that's, it's not a good idea. Um, I wouldn't do that. If you can see, they've nailed too high, or they haven't even hit the wood, most likely. And that's probably why those shingles are raised up like that. Um, now we're going to go and check out these whirly birds. Basically, what they've done with these whirly birds is they have uh, they've buried them. This is what you call buried. When you don't see the bottom flange on either a pipe flange or a whirly bird or any kind of flange. If you don't see the bottom of the flange, that means they buried it. Um, sometimes you can get away with burying something, but in a lot of cases, you shouldn't do that. Um, the simple fact being is they, uh, they don't understand uh, the concept of headlap. Uh, headlap is basically what, what this shingle does is when it goes down right here, the end of it comes to right here. Now you can't see it, but it's there. Now 
this headlamp always has to be covered. Uh, basically, this headlamp will come to right here. Um, once they put this shingle on underneath, which was a good thing, that headlamp will come to right here. Um, when they put this shingle on right here, now this headlamp is going to come to right here. Um, and basically, what has happened is when the water gets in behind here and it works its way in, it's just going to flood in all around this this whirly bird because the person didn't understand the concept of headlap and coverage. Um, this shingle should have been underneath, definitely. There's no way this shingle should not have been underneath. And to be honest with you, I would probably put this shingle underneath. Um, and if I didn't put it underneath, I'd at least put a starter, you know, a, a tab up here. <clears throat> um, and if we look at this whirly bird, that's another, that's the same thing that's happened. Is they've, they've buried it, and by burying it, they've created leaks around this whirly bird. Um, somebody's been up here trying to fix this. What they've did is they've caulked it. Um, that might provide a temporary fix, but basically, you know, what they should have done was they should have installed it properly. Looks like they've installed over a broken board or something. Um, now, when I look at this, I lifted this up. Now, you can see water right there from where water is getting in. Um, and that that's never a good thing. For water to be under your roofing material, it's not good. Okay. Um, over here on this section, you can see that they've buried that uh, pot flange as well. And, you know, that's not a good situation because that, that will leak too. Now we look at this pot flange. And this pot flange was installed, you know, the way I would install it. I would have uh, not buried it. I would have had the flange coming out the bottom. The difference between the way I would have installed it is I would have put a nail here and here uh, just to hold it down. I also would have opened this cut up a little bit more just so water could freely drain around it. Um, now she's got a leak 14 foot off of her wall. Basically it's showing up at the peak and she's just got a little drip coming down. Um, I'm suspecting it's in this area. Um, and when I look at this, uh, this capping or this uh, ridge vent that they put on, um, first thing I notice is it's flat on top. You never want your uh, ridge vent to be flat. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it's flat or what happened, um, but it looks like they really didn't take any steps to make sure it wasn't flat. There are certain things you can do to, uh, you know, ensure that your ridge vent is installed properly and you don't have leaks. Another thing I noticed when I came up here is that the uh, ridge vent was nailed with gun nails. Um, if you know what a gun is or a gun nail is, guns are what they use when they're putting the shingles on. And uh, what they basically do is they're a lot faster, but their fastening knot isn't as good. Um, if I go across through here, I will most likely find shingles where the gun nail has blown through the shingle and isn't actually holding the shingle very well. Um, and that's typically what you're going to find, like that right there, where the gun nail has actually blown through the shingle. Now that can cause leaks. Um, it can also cause you to lose uh, shingles or caps. Um, what I suspect that might be happening is either where one of these gun nail, uh, nails has uh, just blown right through the shingle. Maybe it's not sealing, the shingles aren't sealing down well enough and they're having a leak come in. It could be any of these, you know, these little holes here. Um, also what could possibly be happening is the rain could be hitting this ridge vent and bouncing into the into these little uh, these little slits in the whirly bird. If the whirly bird isn't constantly spinning, in which they should always be spinning, you can spin it. See it spinning now. 
Um, it'll keep water out like that. Um, but if it's not spinning, then that's not a good sign. These whirly birds are not spinning, and there's a potential for wind-driven rain to get into these things. Um, it's not a good sign if your whirly birds aren't spinning. That means you're not getting uh, ventilation. Uh, that one's barely spinning because there's a breeze. Um, but once you get a, uh, <clears throat> a ridge vent system in your roof, you should never have um, any other type of ventilation. Um, the reason being is it, it'll just, you know, interfere with what's going on with the ridge vent as far as ventilation. Another thing I see is exposed nails, a few of them, like right here. Um, this ridge vent's a little bit high here. I don't like how they did this, this tie in here. Another thing I, you know, kind of noticed from the ground was spots like right there is where, you know, like nails or not nails, but boards are, you know, popping loose. They could just be nailed back down. Um, now we're going to go over here for what the uh, home inspector saw and uh, we'll check this out. See how well he did on his little inspection. Um, so what he saw was that basically he saw <clears throat> a wire coming out of the roof, <laughs> which should never happen. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll clip that wire off, slide in a piece of uh, that flashing, and then it'll be sealed up. <clears throat> Another thing he saw was the uh, what they call counter flashing, which actually is not counter flashing. Um, I basically call it uh, Philly flashing because it's like the cheapest thing you can do. Um, if you don't have the skill to actually do counter flashing, this is what you do. You do Philly flashing. Um, this is for people that don't know exactly what they're doing. Um, so they do stuff like this. Or, you know, if they, sometimes you can do this, uh, but most of the time you don't want to. What the inspector saw basically were some caps that were coming loose. Um, basically, what has happened is these have split. Now, I probably know why they did that. The reason they did that was when the person that was putting these caps on, they probably folded the cap directly in half and made a crease in it to make sure they perfectly placed it. Um, and that's that's not a good idea because, you know, see what happened here is they've split open. Uh, it's not a big deal. I think we might have some mint green shingles um, to re, uh, to, you know, to uh, replace those. Um, another thing I see uh, right here is a, it's a really bad, bad sign. Um, is what they did is they went right over the old counter flashing. Now, whoever did this counter flashing originally used copper. And if you can see, this metal is actually cut into the brick. And this metal doesn't end here. It goes probably an inch into the brick. Now, that's a good way to do it. Um, these people, whoever did this roof, they probably should have just left that counter flashing and used that before they put some something cheap like this on here. Um, it's, this is a really bad job. Also, what I see here is a leak. Um, they might not be noticing it yet, but it is a leak. Um, they don't have any pan flashing to cover the uh, headlap up, and their cover shingle has fell off. I also see this corner right here, um, and I could probably guarantee you there's bad things going on in there. <clears throat> um, it takes a little bit of skill to be a, a roofer. I mean, you don't just pick, pick a gun up and start putting shingles on. I mean, people do, uh, but, you know, that's what keeps guys like me uh, busy is, you know, just basically fixing stuff like this. Um, you know, this is, this is, uh, what I see right off hand. Um, I'm sure if I just kept looking, I could find a lot more stuff wrong. Um, I could do that basically with every roof. Um, well, not every roof, but most. 
Um, if you look here, you can see what they did again is they folded their cap all the way and they put a crease in it. They actually crushed it together to where it's flat like that and then laid it down. Um, and when you do that, you make you make a fissure in the shingles that eventually will split open. Um, I'm looking at the garage and what I see um, is a pretty straight roof until you get past this valley um, or you know the tie-in and whoever you know started over here on this side they started on the wrong line, so you see a baby course, or what I call a bastard run, um, almost at the top of the uh, valley, but that's not what I'm here to look for. Um, but we'll go ahead and show this to uh, Mrs. Delmar, and we'll fix these couple little leaks.